Welcome to our annual corporation meeting. Christian Heritage Academy is legally a corporation. The owners of the corporation are the patrons, though that is the individuals who have children enrolled at Christian Heritage Academy. We are required by our school bylaws and we do adhere to our bylaws. We do that very well. We take that seriously. So our bylaws, which were written in 1972, mandate that we have an annual corporation meeting. That is a meeting of all of our corporation owners. That is the parents. We've done it a variety of ways. We are also required to have that in the month of May. So that is this month. So we, again, are abiding by our school bylaws. We're also videoing this, and so we will get this out on a link on our social media so people who are not here today will have an opportunity to watch this corporation meeting. So I'll let, uh, let me lead us in prayer, and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Kevin Pinwell, our board president, and he can officially begin our meeting, our corporation meeting, and he'll let you know what the things need to be done during our, our meeting today. So let me pray for us before we begin. Lord, we are grateful for your goodness to us and your blessings in our lives, our families, our churches, and here at our school. We thank you for the history of the school. We thank you for founding the school at Sunnyside Baptist Church. We thank you for sustaining the school over these 47 years and protecting and providing. We're grateful for that. Lord, we thank you for this evening and for giving us the opportunity to meet. We thank you for those who will watch this uh, after the fact on video, we thank you for uh, the, our parents for their involvement in our school. Thank you for the Board of Trustees, the men and women who really govern our school and guide and keep our school. We are grateful for them and their service. Lord, we pray that you would bless throughout this meeting this evening. Pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, thanks for being here this evening. Um, the school sent out um, a bio and uh, uh, on current board members, you should have that in an email. We'll also send this out with an email link on your ballot. Uh, there are four nominees, um, and I'll just read those uh, for documentation, and then uh, as you guys watch and follow up with this, if you have questions, there'll be a, a ballot there that'll give you a specific time to finish up. Uh, usually we give uh, five to seven days, depending on any technical glitches to get that out. Um, but we have a nine-member board. Three uh, folks rotate off every three years. They're three-year terms, um, and it keeps us fresh. And then we um, are allowed to serve two consecutive terms, and then they're required to rotate off. So it'll be a six-year uh, maximum time before you uh, rotate off, and then you're eligible to be back on. Uh, we have a nominating committee process. Um, and uh, members that have been uh, served as alternates, and then we're looking to even add some other ways that we can be connected more to our um, representative body as much as folks want to be connected. So um, those four candidates are Mr. Earl Donor, Mr. Dan Llewellyn, myself is up for re-election, Kevin Penwell, and then Mr. Jay Roberts. Earl Donor, as you guys will see, is an alumnus of 1986. Several kiddos have gone through here. His wife is also an alumnus. Dan uh, Llewellyn is a, a current um, a parent of alumni and has served as an alternate these past couple of years. I've had the privilege of serving on the Board of Trustees since 2015. And then Jay has been a longstanding uh, board uh, member, maybe 20 plus years um, of being on the board. He's an 83 alumni, um, works at Tinker, could not be here tonight, neither could Dan. They're both traveling. and. Appreciate their service to our uh, military. And um, uh, Jay's wife also taught for a while um, and is uh, uh, got a couple of kiddos who've uh, graduated from here as well. So you guys can read that more and ex extensively, but those are um, also, um, uh, you'll see on that list, the other board members, Mr. Ike Burris, who's been on the board since 1996 and rotated on and off, has an extensive history of being in education and board, and we're grateful to have his um, leadership and, and just insight. Um, Dr. Henry Chan has been on the board uh, since 2017. Miss, uh, Mrs. Excuse me, Melanie Draper is uh, also joined. She's an alumnus uh, 2017. Mr. Zach Graves, uh, graduate of 1994, as well as his wife is 1995. 
and several kiddos here. I was recently joined us this past year, and uh, Miss Danielle Hill was reelected last year uh, and has been on, serving on the board since 2015. And then Mr. Kevin McGee uh, first joined uh, the board in 2001, um, has got some grandkids now uh, that are attending uh, CHA and several uh, kids that are alumni. Um, w what strikes me about our board makeup is that we have uh, so many alumni, which is uh, wonderful, but we also have such long tenure. Um, I'm going to share a quick video with you. It's about 10 minutes that basically is a little bit of a different approach that the board has taken over the past couple of years. It's called a board governance policy approach. And the reason we're, we've done that is we really want to document um, the great history that, and heritage that CHA has had and the Lord's blessed us with, but also to be able to be who we are in the future connected to who we've been in the past. Um, and uh, this is a way that we can do that. Um, and we're really have been excited about going through this policy governance model and having a board manual and tying that in with our bylaws. And so Dr. Graybill is an executive coach and really a, a policy governance uh, specialist who came now two years uh, in a row and did a board retreat with us, helped us set up the board manual a little over a year ago, and then has come and done a strategic planning with our faculty. And then this is an excerpt from a uh, meeting that we had with several folks that were uh, available from both alumni to parents of alumni, gr grandparents that were able to kind of come and hear about this, ask questions and give us some feedback. And so uh, we were able to record that to be able to share that with you. Um, during this time. So we'll watch that and then um, I'll give you a little bit more of an update after that, but um, we'll take some questions if folks have it. Um, but that'll pretty much uh, wrap up our uh, corporation meeting uh, tonight. So we'll uh, queue up the video and we'll get ready. To I've become convinced after several trips to Oklahoma that 50% of the people in Oklahoma are graduates of CHA. Uh, <laughs> So let's do a little research part. Raise your hand if you are a graduate of CH. Oh, I might need to dial it down to 35% here, something like that. But thank you for being here tonight. So glad you're here. This is a special time that we've been looking forward to. Um, as Dr. Penwell said, I'm Phil Graybill, and I'm from South Carolina. You knew there was something different. I wasn't from around here. <laughs> so, South Carolina, been there 26 years. I've been a, uh, for 22 years, was a head of school, a Christian school, and the last 18 years, had the privilege of training boards of directors of Christian ministries. I tell folks I'm a dance instructor. Now, for those of you Baptists in the room, don't get too worried. I, I, is not real, I don't really teach people to dance, but I, I tell folks that I teach boards and administration how to dance with each other without tromping on one another's feet. In other words, what is the board's job? What's the administration's job? And how do they fit well together in an integrated fashion? Well, that's a real trick for a lot of ministries. You know, I found that... Uh, over the years, as I've been in Christian ministry for over 40 years now, uh, that a lot of times friends of mine who are leading Christian ministries would say, I, I give up. I just, uh, I don't know how to properly interact with my board. And it's confusing because I knew those, a lot of those board members, they were good people. And I knew that that head of that ministry and a good person, but they just didn't have a clear system of how to operate and how to interact well uh, between board and administration. In fact, a lot of times the boards thought that their job was the same as the administration, uh, except theirs was written in capital letters. <laughs> and, and so if they both had the same job, no wonder things got mixed up. So fundamentally, I, I teach boards that the board's job is one thing, the staff's job is another thing, so they fit well together uh, in a way that the Lord is honored. Now I'm gonna draw a diagram that, uh, that could help. I, I wish I'd been an art major, but you will very quick, quickly find out that I was not. <laughs> but he, here is a, a diagram that describes the governance process and 
and I'll just take a few moments to tell you some of the basic principles of how the board here has chosen to operate uh, in this setting. But uh, in a board, it starts with um, a bowl of ownership. There's someone who owns the organization and wants to change the world. Now, in a corporate setting, who are the owners? Yeah, I've never taken a group more than three seconds to answer that question. The stockholders. You own stock in that corporation, uh, you're an owner. You get 51% of the stock and you can change a pizza shop into a shoe store. You know, you, you own it. Now, in a nonprofit, who are the owners? That's right. It's not quite as clear, is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, be, so, in this example here, since I train nonprofits, I, I tell folks that the ownership here is a moral ownership. Yeah, there's legal uh, components to, I think you have a corporation here that legally ho holds uh, uh, CHA. But from a moral or ethical standpoint, who can you not not listen to? For whom will you cup your hand behind your ear and say, now what was that again? With a view toward responsiveness. Because we are defined by who we listen to with a sense of urgency. Okay? Organizations are defined by who they choose to listen to with a sense of urgency or uh, accommodation. So I'm going to say the moral ownership here. So from a moral or ethical standpoint, who do we listen to? Let you in on a secret. You were chosen to come to this meeting tonight because someone deemed that you were part of the moral ownership. Uh, and in the actual policy manual that the board has, they've defined the moral ownership as ultimately God, of course, and then the members of the corporation and other fellow stewards who share a commitment, a clear commitment to the ends of the organization. So let me go ahead and put that up here, ends. Now, this ends is, is not simply the opposite of means. It, it's, a, um, it's a more complex thing than that, but I'm gonna simply call it results, transformational results. Once the school gets done with whatever they do, what's the output? What are the results in the lives of students? That's what the ends are. You have on your um, table a copy of these. I think you've passed them around. Good. So we will be talking about these ends tonight. This is what the board, and it's um, since they've been using this system of governance, have said, Best we can tell, this is what we're after. You know, that when we get to the end of the process, we want to see these results in the lives of students. So when I say the ends, what you have in front of you is what I'm talking about. So this ownership says we want to change the world and we want it to look like this, so they appoint a board. That board then is filled with busy people and as has been said, the greatest labor-saving device ever invented by a board is the CEO. Well, in this case, you call it a headmaster. So they have a headmaster, and then they say to the, uh, the headmaster, what would be the first thing they'd say? That's a hint. <laughs> reach the ends, okay? Reach the ends, but while you're reaching those ends, stay within these limits. In other words, take this ship called Christian Heritage Academy, sail it down this river till you get to these ports, and while you're doing it, don't beach the boat. Stay within these boundaries. It's really pretty simple, right? The, uh, the ultimate job of a board is to see that good things happen and bad things don't. So, now, we all know that rivers don't have straight banks. They're wider in some places, more narrow in, in others. Um, but the board's job is to design the policy manual where they give the appropriate latitude of choice to the headmaster and his staff to make decisions within the banks of the river. And so they say, uh, whatever you do, don't cross these boundaries. Uh, and then they might 
you know, narrow it in a little bit for we're going to limit your latitude of choice in these areas. So they make the, the river as wide or as narrow as they feel appropriate to be trustworthy trustees and then turn it over to the administration to do what they're gifted to do, called to do, prepared to do, to sail the ship toward these ends, within these boundaries, for the glory of God. Okay? I've oftentimes asked folks, who was your favorite boss over the years, that, people that you work for? And invariably they say, the one that told me, my, made sure my job was clear, and then let me do it. Okay? So, so, and that's the case here. The board says, this is what we want to see at the end of the day. We want to see those ends accomplished in the lives. Of, we want transformed lives as you cooperate with God to do what he does best in changing lives. See that those things happen. And while you're doing it, don't beach the boat. Okay? Then, I mean, if you were to see a policy manual of the board, it would have four parts, literally. It would have the ends policies, it would have the management limitations policies, the things that they can't do. Then, then it would have two up here that deal with how the board does its job, what the relationship should look like between the board and the head, um, and then how the board does its job, uh, the requirements of the board, uh, the um, standards of the board, when they're elected, what their terms are, those kind of details. Um, and how they do their job to direct, control, and inspire the organization. So that's an overview of the policy governance model. Um, I asked a group uh, one time, you know, after I'd done about six hours of training with them, and I said, so what did you learn? What is this policy governance model to you? And then several of them gave pretty fancy uh, answers that I was impressed with and then one guy said oh Dr. Grable I don't get into all those big words I just think it's it's a way that the board does board stuff and the staff does staff stuff and the whole thing works better for the glory of God <laughs> well I thought that was a pretty fair assessment <laughs> of it and, and I've had the privilege of training boards in what 28 states and 14 different countries and this model of, of governance because it, it's a tool that can help boards exalt the name of the Lord and, and his calling in that school in a great way. So that's <coughs> intro. But as you see that, I hope you'll wonder why we're doing what we've done. And the reality is, is we, we're grateful for the charge and we're humbled by the responsibility to serve the school at board level. And what we want to do is, as he said, we want to continue to make sure that good things happen and bad things don't. CHA has a 47 year history of the Lord just blessing it and protecting it. And we really want to be able to document those 47 years, the, the successes that, and the blessings of the Lord, so that in when the school's been here 100 plus years, it's still producing what the Lord charged it to do 47 years ago in 1972. So from the board, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to serve uh, you and also the Lord here at CHA and to work with uh, incredible um, uh, staff that the Lord's blessed us with here at CHA and also uh, the value of the parents and y'all's participation and uh, commitment to um, Christian education as a conviction and not as a convenience. And uh, we're grateful for that. So you'll be getting an email uh, with these links to vote. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing more about this government policy model in the future. And um, we're going to wrap up here in a word of prayer. And then we'll um, we have the band concert here in just a few moments. I hope you can stay for it. Lord, we are just grateful and, and really humbled that um, you've chosen uh, to use us just to further your kingdom. We're excited to hear even recently as students have um, just realize their position in life and that they're a sinner and that they've uh, need you and they've accepted your free gift of salvation and have chosen to uh, chase after you and it's exciting to hear you using teachers other students families the events and activities around cha to continue to call people to 
you ultimately, Lord, that you be glorified. We pray that as this time ends tonight and this video uh, is uh, put out, Lord, that ultimately you'd be glorified. We're thankful for your continued blessing and hand a blessing upon CHA. And we pray that all that come onto this campus would be pointed to you, would learn about you, and ultimately uh, seek after and choose you. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.